Hello, and welcome back to our church school lesson. It's so good to have you with us, and we hope and pray that this lesson will be a blessing to you. But before we begin our study, allow me just a few moments to ask God's blessing on those that will be hearing this lesson. Dear Lord, here we are once again coming together to study your word. Lord, we want to take this opportunity to say thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts with others around the world. Lord, this lesson has opened my eyes to how your son suffered for us. And Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, please have mercy on the sick and the bereaved everywhere, Lord. Lord, have mercy on this nation, on all the nations around this world. You are in control, Lord, and I'm asking that you would be our guide. And Lord, thank you again for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're back, and we have another beautiful lesson so that we could have a better understanding on Jesus Christ and what he did so that we might have salvation. So, without being uh, delaying, let's look at our lesson for tonight. As we see, we have, as our lesson shows us, we're still in Unit 2, and we're uh, Unit 2 by His Sacrifice. We're, less, we're looking at lesson number four of the Union Gospel Press book. And our subject or our title for today or tonight is Submitting to the Father's Will. The time is A.D. 30 and the place is Mount of Olives. Now another writer said that, that the place was uh, Gethsemane, which is where a lot of this takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay, uh, we're studying from the book of Matthew, starting at verse 36 through 50, and we will be using as our uh, scriptures the New Living Translation. Now, let's look at our golden text, and it's coming from that 39th verse out of uh, chapter 26. And like I said, this is the New Living Translation. He went a little farther and bowed his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. All right? And as we see, we have four outlines. The first one is the first prayer. We're going to be looking at verse 36 through uh, 41. The second outline is talking about the second prayer, and that covers verse 42 and 43. The third outline is covering the third prayer, which is coming from verses 44 through 46, and our final outline, the betrayal, and that's coming from verse 47 to uh, 50. Now, as we see, <clears throat> we are starting at the 36th verse of this uh, 26th chapter, and a lot has gone on from chapter 1 to, cha I mean, from verse 1 down to 36, but in this case, what has preceded, uh, what had taken place before our scriptures was that the Lord himself they had just instituted the Lord's Supper. And we all know about the Lord's Supper or the, 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 the Last Supper. They all sat around a table and they ate and they relaxed because that culture was that they would lay down and stretch out and eat. Well, Jesus had uh, made this uh, a memorial for him so that they will remember that they are to celebrate the Lord's Supper uh, as often as they do it, they were to remember him. And as they ate and was 
relaxed, Jesus decided, well, let me get these fellas up because they're getting a little too relaxed here and they're not going to be ready to work. Because in during that relaxing time, Jesus told them that one of them was going to betray him. And of course, they all looking at each other and thinking, well, we're right here. Well, Lord, who are you talking about? And all Jesus said was that the one who dipped his hand in the bowl that we all are eating from. And they still didn't know who it was, but if we, we remember those of us that studied the Bible know that he was talking about Judas. So Jesus decided, uh, and of course they, did, they said that they wouldn't do this. Even Peter said, no, Lord, I'll die for you. And this is where, after they had this back and forth and talking, Jesus decided, okay, okay, uh, fellas, let's get up and go to the Garden of Gethsemane so we can, uh, uh, I need some time and we can sit down and pray. And so he got them up and he led them out. By this time, uh, Judas had ran off because, see, Judas went to the leaders and the priests and the Roman soldiers. He was going to, he was going to sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. So, because, see, they... The, the chief priest and the leaders, even the Roman soldiers, they wanted Jesus, the, really it was the, the religious leaders that wanted Jesus dead because they fit, killed, because they thought he was getting beside himself. He was putting himself on the same level with God. So there's always one in the group that will betray you. So don't forget that. So now they're, they're, they're going and they're walking to the garden. So let's look at our scriptures that we have uh, for our first outline. And as we see, uh, it, the first outline is talking about the first prayer. Now, these prayers are Jesus that's praying, not the disciples, but Jesus. Okay, let's look at our, look, let's read our scriptures. Verse 36, then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, he says, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Verse 39, he went on a little further and bowed his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And then verse 40, and then he returned to his disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? In verse 41, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Now, as we see in our first outline, Jesus, they've gone, they've left the upper room they've gone and they're walking and they've come to the garden of gethsemane now what he does he there was remember there were 11 disciples because that one is he don't run off he gone the, the betrayer the traitor is gone so he leave eight of them at the front of the gate and he tell them you watch and you stay here and pray he said well i go over and I prayed. Now, he left eight at the gate, but he took three with him. Now, these three, our uh, lesson tells us he took Peter and Zebedee's son, John and, J and James. Well, these were considered Jesus' inner circle, those that were real close to him. You know, an inner circle, uh, you, you have a lot of friends, but there are certain friends that stick closer to you or more close to you and that's where these three come in as his inner circle of, 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 of friends so he told them after he went a little further they said like a throne a stone's throw away now exactly how far that is our lesson does not tell us but he tells them also he tells them 
he was telling and he was talking to them and he was telling them about how he his soul was crushed he, he said with the grief to the point of death now he's confiding this with his disciples he had mentioned it as they were walking but they weren't paying attention didn't gather so when the three of his inner circle say his road dogs or his his homies when they were walking a little further jesus gave more detail of what the agony that was going on within him okay now someone would say but this is jesus he did he didn't feel anything yes he did he took on a human body a man's body where he felt the same pain as we do if he cut himself he would bleed he was hungry he was thirsty like every human being that walks on this planet so he was trying to he was just talking to his best buds and telling them he says it, that it, it was he was just agonizing over he didn't really want to die but he knew that his father's will had to be done so that people like me could be saved and then he because he told him that he was crushed just burdened down he was just it was just so much on him till he was he was he was just like us when we get bad news it it presses on us it 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 touches our spirit so when he took his three inner circle friends the disciples when he took them and they went on a little further while the other stayed at the gate as i said jesus in his inner circles walked a little further jesus confided in them that's the word i was looking for he confided in them about his sorrow and his heavy heart he was really agonizing over this he didn't he was a human being he didn't want to go through trouble he did not want to have to suffer that pain and suffering but he knew that he had to do it so look what he says that when he left them there and he went a little farther and he bowed his face to the ground he didn't look up like this oh lord oh lord help me help me. no he was humble himself he bowed down he was low to the ground and he was crying out to his father he said that, look we in that he says he went a little further and he bowed his face to the ground he said my father if it is possible he didn't say just change it he's asking god if it is possible let this cup of suffering you see that be taken away from me then he turns right around he said yet i want your will to be done and not mine he was hurting but he wanted that to he wanted he wanted the the suffering of that cup that cup suffering was his physical suffering that's what that was about because he there were three types of suffering that he was talking about the first one was the, the he was talking about the seat of, of the seat of him the sorrow was his soul was in agony that was the first part of his suffering the second was he was talking about the degree of his suffering so you know sometimes you can print your finger you, you pick it or something you have a little suffering but if you cut that there's going to be more suffering from that when someone you love there is a deeper suffering and that's why he was talking about that the uh this that second suffering was talking about his degree it was exceedingly that this this writer said exceedingly sorrowful the highest uh of degree was with his talking about death is nothing more painful than death and that's what jesus was he was given these three types of of sorrow when he told when he was talking to his father and then he said he said he talked about that third uh, degree he was talking about how long this was this suffering was going to last and he said until it will continue until he died so when he went in the garden and he was praying he was still in agony he knew death was coming but he would not be relieved of this suffering until he died and then look when he he prayed that and he was praying a whole hour how many of us actually take time and pray to the father for a whole hour how many times do we take time out 
and have a and don't worry about a quick prayer. We just start talking and we pray and we pray. This is what Jesus said. Then look, after he prayed that for a whole and all, he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He went to the the to his three homies who he thought was really his friends and his close brothers. Because you see what he said? Peter. He called out Peter. He did not call out no one else. He called Peter. He, he was calling, talking to Peter. He says, Peter, in that, in that uh, 40th verse, Peter, couldn't you stay on? Couldn't you watch one hour? Couldn't, in other words, Peter, you couldn't stay awake one hour? You were just talking about how you would die for me. But this, you, you couldn't, you could not keep watch. And then look, in that, uh, in that 41 verse, he says, keep watch and pray. He didn't just tell them to sit and watch to see what's going on. Pray, be prayerful, so that when your temptations come upon you, it's going to be a lot that's going to change you all once I'm uh, no longer here. He says, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. If we would spend more time in prayer, there are a whole lot of sinful things we wouldn't commit. He says, for the, look, he even tells, he said, for the spirit is willing. But the body is weak. Somewhere else I read where it says, though the spirit is willing, the flesh, you know, oh, we, our flesh is sinful. We fall into sin a lot of time because we follow our flesh and not the spirit. We are quick to do that. And that's what he's telling Peter, James, and John. He hadn't gone back to all of them yet. He's right there with them and letting them know your flesh is weak. You must stay uh, in, in prayer and be in spiritual because the flesh is what's sinful. It's not the, the spirit that dwells in us. It's the flesh. All right? Now, that's when he went back after his first prayer. And we see that where he come back and the, his, his, his buddies, his road dogs, his best friends are sleeping. So now let's look at our second prayer. And as we see... In the second prayer, it's verse 42 and 43, and it reads, When Jesus left the second time and prayed, he said, My Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will will be done. Then guess what? When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open open. Now, it reminds me of this when you, you give your children instructions on uh, chores to do. They have a certain time to come in, get a snack, do your homework, and if there's, uh, you didn't, uh, there's some cleaning to be done, you need to do that because when you have supper, most time you are going to sit down, enjoy a little TV, and go to bed. But children, even adults, don't follow instructions and won't keep them because they get involved in other activities. So when he went back after his, uh, he went away and he prayed the second time. But this time he's talking to his father when he said, when Jesus goes and prays a second prayer, he's, his second prayer was he resigned to be, to be the, to the fact that God was in control. And that's when he was talking about that cup. He says, my father, if this cup, remember the first prayer, he says, remove this cup. But then he's coming back, he says, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink of it. In other words, he's, he's resigning his, uh, he's resigning to the will of God. In other words, he's taking, he's going back and saying, not, no, Lord, don't take it away. He says, because if this cup cannot be taken away, he's, going, he's resigning to do what the Father has sent him to do. He says, if it cannot be taken away unless I drink it. So this cup, this bitter cup, this, 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 this physical death that's going to come on him, he says, unless I drink it. He knows that he that's what he came here to do, that he must drink it. So he's he's given up on that part about 
if if you take it away, take this bitter cup. Now he's going back and he's letting him, he's letting the father know that it's not my will, but let your will be done. So he's telling, he's letting the father know your will be done. No matter what I have to go through or how bad it is, I know that your will will be done. So I'm going to resign my desire to not want to take it and your will be done. And then after he prayed that, he goes back to those three homies, those three brothers of uh, his brothers, or his disciples. And he says, when he returned to them, he found them sleeping. He said, they, they, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. In another uh, writing, it says, their eyes was heavy. And it does not say what he did, but he, when he got back, he didn't bother to, to say nothing to him. He just let them go and go to sleep. He said, because they were sleeping, and they'll, they'll wake up and not realize, they'll see that they weren't on guard like they should have been. So when he left them that time, he didn't, he didn't chastise them. He didn't, he didn't call out Peter. He didn't, he didn't make him ask him any questions he just probably like we do okay well just let him go ahead on I'm, I'm going on I have a uh, uh, an assignment to do here and I must do it and the Lord God Almighty is going to be here with me so now let's look at, at the third prayer and we'll see how Jesus uh, is praying to the Father all right and this is the third prayer and this is verse 46 through uh, 44 through 46. That's what this is. So, as we see, so he went and prayed a third time, saying the same things. He was in agony, you all. He says, then he came to his disciples. After he prayed, he's still talking to the Lord. He's talking to his father. But after he prayed this third time, I believe I read somewhere where they said that the dis that the Lord sent an angel to minister to him. So then when he got up from that prayer, he was he was more ready to take on this task. And look at verse 45 where he says, Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed unto the hands of sinners. He says, 46, get, he says, up. Let's be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Now, as I said, when he went and prayed that third time, and he came, he prayed, and he he was somehow uh, the uh, our Lord God Almighty sent some and sent an angel to minister him to encourage him, since his his friends weren't there to have that friendship to say, "I'm with you, no matter what you're going through. I'm I'm gonna stand right here with you." Have you ever known a friend that was dying uh, of a horrible disease and you stood by their bed and you held their hands or you continued to pray for them? This is what Jesus wanted his, 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 his three most important friends to do for him. He didn't want them to take on his agony. He just wanted them to be support there for him. And then when he, after he did that and went back and God takes care of his own, you all listen to me. No matter how hard the struggle, God will take care of you. So in that verse 45, when he went back and he saw them and they were sleeping, he said, go ahead. Y'all go to sleep. Do sleep on you. You take your rest. He says, but look, the time has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Now, what he's talking about, he's telling him, he, He's telling those disciples, he says, you don't realize, but look, the son of man, which he was talking about himself, he says, is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Not them, but the, the ones that he told them to watch and, and be on watch to see who was coming. Then he told them, he says, get up. He said, get up. He says, let's be going. He said, look, my betrayer is coming. Now, Jesus knew this, and he knew that without a doubt that, that Judas was going to betray him. So what he he was trying to inf let the disciples know that there's going to be times when you need to be on 
alert. You need to be continually in prayer because the enemy is coming and he's going to be, he called them the sinners. And this, guess who these group of people were that was coming after our Lord. And he told them, he says, now you gonna, you need to get up, wake up, come on, see, I, I see him coming. So let's look at our last outline and we'll be almost finished. And as we see, and he's talking about the betrayal, the betrayal, y'all, of who was one of his, how that just, he was a betrayal, a traitor. Okay, in verse uh, 47. And even as Jesus said this, when he told him to get up and say, look, they're coming. Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with the crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. Clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Verse 49. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he explained, and gave him a kiss. And Jesus said, my friend, go ahead, do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Now, Judas was one of them. Remember what I told you that when they were having the Lord's Supper, he dipped his hands in the same bowl that the others did. So that was, Jesus told them one of them was going to betray him. When Jesus saw Judas coming with the great multitude, now remember, these weren't just some people that Judas had picked up on the side and, and decided he was going to uh, overtake Jesus. No, some of these were Roman soldiers and the servants of the chief priests and elders. The chief priests and elders were supposed to have been the believers in, in Jesus Christ. These were the religious leaders and the Roman soldiers. They they sent now they the Roman soldiers was the ones there with the swords. All these other people, these these uh, servants of the chief priests and the elders, they had clubs with like sticks and stones, and 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 they didn't come quietly. You all, there was it was like a multitude of them. You know, Jesus he already knew they were coming, but he could see in the distance the light was coming. That's why he told his disciples, "Get up, look, the betrayal is coming." So. These same people, and guess who was leading the pack? Not the Roman soldiers. It was Judas, one that had been to the garden before uh, Gethsemane with the Lord on other occasions and all the other disciples. He led them right there because he knew the, uh, how the disciples would uh, travel when they came to Jerusalem. When they went to rest, they would go to the garden. So he knew this. So this man was one of what I would say, one of his uh, his followers, just like your friends, you will have friends that will betray you. They will seek to devour and to kill you. And this happens all the time. But when you pray and you pray right, God will show it to you. He will reveal it to you. And then he will protect you. And then he says, when he came, look, Judas had already told him, I'm a, since they didn't know who exactly, which one was Jesus, now listen, this the friend, I'm going to go and kiss him on the cheek so you'll know that's the one you grab and then grab him quickly. Well, see, during that time, even today in that culture, men greeted each other with a kiss on each cheek. They would hug and, and kiss each other. Now, this wasn't a sexual thing. This was a cultural thing, which they still do today. So... He is. He's leading these people to our Lord and Savior. And what he do? He go there and he call him. What did he say? He look. He he go straight to him and greetings. Our book, our New Living says greetings. In other words, he kissed him. Then called had nerve to call him rabbi. Then that something. They your enemies will do that to you. And then he he kissed him, like if if everything is all good. But the good part of this was in our fiftieth verse. When Jesus, and then all Jesus said was, my friend. Now, you know, if that had been me, 
and my sister that had been with me, and I know she was a traitor, and she's been stabbing me in the back, and she came up to kiss me. I told her, uh-uh, hold up. No, mm-mm, don't kiss. Yeah, hey, I, I'm glad to see you. Yeah, you do, you look good, but don't kiss me. Now, Jesus, he didn't do that. He called him friend, and then he said, then he told him, okay, friend. In other words, Jesus said, I know what you're doing. I know what your plan is. Go ahead and do what you come here to do. And when, and when he kissed Jesus, they, when, when uh, Peter saw this, Peter saw these men coming. Do y'all know Peter drew his sword and cut that soldier's ear off? And Jesus had to tell him, calm down, Pete. No, Pete is the leader of the, the wild bunch. Pete ready to fight. Peter had went to sleep on him, and he realized what he had did. So when he saw them coming after his savior, Peter drew his sword and sliced that man's ear off. And Jesus told him, no. Jesus went there, picked that man's ear up, and put it back on him. And then these people grabbed Jesus, and Jesus allowed them. You hear me? He didn't fight with them. None of the other disciples tried to fight with them. Jesus allowed them. Because, you know, he could have just spoke a word, and they all would have fell down and died. No, Jesus allowed that because he was doing what he come here to do and how many of us will allow someone to grab hold to us no no mm -mm, mm -mm. Not, not unless it's we greeting someone we love and we know somebody we haven't seen and we glad to see him but for them this big mob of people to grab him and nobody nobody tried to fight that was nothing but God's plan and Jesus shows us when they people, when our enemies come upon us to attack us, we are to stand firm and believe in God if, and keep on praying, even in the midst of our hardest struggle. God will take care of us. And as we close this lesson, I'd like to read this conclusion. It says, in this week's lesson, we have seen personal struggles that Jesus experienced in the Garden of Gethsemane. We have noticed his honesty of his prayer requests. He didn't try to make it up or make it better. He was honestly praying. He prayed from his heart, from an aching heart, an agony spirit that was disturbed. He, we have also noticed his singleness of purpose in submitting to the Father's will above everything else. He still was going to do what the Lord had sent him for. We have seen the effect that Jesus' time with, with the Father had on him. Although his three closest followers let him down and a fourth one betrayed him, Jesus' garden experience prepared him for the cross. And our lesson goes, it stops right there. But we know that there's some more things going on that's going to happen before we get to this, uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, which is uh, Easter in April. But we have a great lesson here to realize that even in our toughest times, our hardest struggle, hold on. Keep praying. God is with us. If he's given you an assignment and others are out to destroy you and to cease your assignment from going on, keep in, keep God in the forefront and pray. And when you pray, the Holy Spirit will take your prayers to Jesus and Jesus will take those prayers to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. I pray and hope that this lesson is a blessing to you. And if it was, hit the thumbs up button or the like button and subscribe. Tell someone else about this. When you subscribe, it's only going to help others to see that we have a great lesson here. And until then, may God bless you and keep you all until the next time.